What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer. So in today's video, we're going to go through the process of creating an application by using the Vision OS SDK from the ground up. And specifically, we're going to be using Swift UI, also Reality Kit. We're also going to be using Reality Composer Pro to create some of our scenes, to add audio, to add 3D models. And I'm also going to walk you through what the different windows are by using Swift UI, how you can set up a layout, vertical layout, horizontal layout, also a Z axis layout, which is going to allow you to have a navigation stack. So there's going to be a lot to consume in this video. This is what I learned and I want to show you by practice what I ended up doing to create this application. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer and I start working on it. Let's go ahead and go into new and then you can go down to where it says project. And I am not like an expert with Xcode. I've been doing mobile applications, but that was many years ago with Objective-C. So I spent a lot of time on that. So ever since I haven't really touched it, I've been using Unity. So hopefully what I've been doing for the last few weeks, which is learning Xcode, which is learning, you know, Swift, is going to help you in building your own Vision OS experiences. So to start off, you're going to see all these tabs in here. Just go into the Vision. OS tab, and then we're going to be just creating an app. So you can click on next. Then the product name is going to be inspiration for app. And I wanted to pick something that, you know, got me excited. So I wanted to do something with the SpaceX inspiration for mission. And I am a SpaceX geek. So I, I think in a NASA geek. So I think picking something that I get excited about allow me to push myself to do, you know, a video training with Vision OS. So once you go through this, you're going to have a team, an organization, which is going to be using the product name. There's also a bundle identifier, which is really important when you're going to be uploading that to the developer portal. If you guys were to release an app, that's going to be very important because that's going to be unique. And then the initial scene, this for now, we can just say window because I'm going to be deleting everything anyways. I want to create it from scratch with everything that I learned. So let's just do a window for now. And then the render that we're going to be using, it's going to be Reality Kit. That's the one that I've been using with Swift UI. I haven't done anything with Metal just yet. I've done some with Unity in the past, but not for this video series. Then the immersive X space is really important because full, it's going to be whether you want to have a basically full VR where you cannot see the, the real world. And then if you do mix, it's going to be basically you see more of a pass through experience, right? We have dev, we have, in, in this case, it's not really just pass through. It's going to be more in, in the mixed reality world if you do mix, because it's going to know about the physical world elements. So for now, we can just do full. I'm going to change that anyways when we go into the code and then just click on next. Once you click on next, just pick a folder. I already created one, but that folder is for the previous app. So I'm just going to create a brand new one and we can just put it in there. You can also decide if you want to use Git or not. I am using Git, but I don't like using Git with Xcode. I use it through the terminal. So it's really up to you what you want to do there. And then just click on create. So it's going to be like in Visual Studio where you see, you know, your solution. In this case, it's going to be all your different Swift files, your assets, and then also the reality kit content, which is going to be very, very important. And this is really cool because anything that you change here on the coding view is going to change here in real time. And the reason why that works is because there's this thing here called preview, which allows you to change how we preview what we have in here. And this is kind of like a partial preview of your app. It doesn't really do all the functionality. If you want to see the entire thing, you hit play, and then basically that will run on the simulator. This is just a lightweight simulator that is built into Xcode. So we'll look into that a lot more. So to start off, I'm just going to delete everything though. I'm just gonna delete basically this file, and then we can just, just go ahead and move it to the trash. And then I'm going to go in here and maybe we just make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything. So just, just know that the starting point of your application, of your app, it's going to be this. We can just say inspiration for app. And I think that should work. You can go into new file. And if you go into new file, it's going to tell you anything that is available in all the different templates that are available for Vision OS. So in my case, I just want to do, let's say that we wanted to do a Swift UI view and we can do next. And it's going to tell you, okay, what the name of this is going to be. So 
In this case, I'm gonna call, let's just go ahead and call this one areas and I'll show you why that is. And then we can click on create. And the areas one, it's going to have basically the navigation component that is going to allow us to push different windows in the Z space. And I'll show you how that works, but let's go ahead and move this into its song group as well. And I'm gonna call these areas and we can just drag and drop this into here. And basically this is gonna hold all the different areas so, such as the mission, such as the, you know, all the crew members that we have, the equipment. So what we need to do now, this is just hello world, right? So we could go in here and say, well, this is, this is gonna be the, and you can see here, it says main, that's the starting point. It's gonna be a struct, which is going to be our app. And we can also rename this in here. And then the body, this is gonna have most of the, the logic of, you know, how we create the windows, what style the windows are gonna create. Is it gonna be an immersive experience? Is it going to be a full experience versus a mixed experience? Is it gonna be a volumetric window or just a regular window? So that's where you can start deciding the style of the windows that you're going to have and then other properties as well. So one thing that we can do in here, we can say, well, I just want to open areas and you can do that by just saying areas, which is the name of the view that I have in here. And you can see that this is inheriting from view. On the preview, I can also go around. I'm using my mouse to basically navigate around. If I hold the control button and I were to scroll with the mouse, I can basically zoom in and zoom out. And there's also other controls that you can use to, to navigate this. So, for now, this is working, it looks great, but we can also run the app, right? We can say, okay, I wanna see what renders when I, I run the app and I'm gonna do Command R and you can see that this is already running. And if I wanted to go home though, I can, you know, I can hit this button in here. And then what that's gonna do, it should bring me back to, you know, to all the different apps. If we go in here to the actual app, you can also apply different styles. So I can say window and then a style and in this case, let's say that we wanted to use a plain style. So if we go back into the beta version of the Apple Vision Pro Simulator and we were to run, so right now it's using kind of like a glassy style look on the window, but if we wanted to use plain, you can do that. Just gonna do Command R. There we go, looks like it opened. I, okay, so it looks like that, it's good. So if you wanna go back to the normal style, you can just remove that. You can also set the size of the window here. We can say something like I wanted to do the size of this could be, we can say width is going to be, maybe we'll just make it smaller, 200. And then I can tap to go to the next parameter and then we can do 150. And you're gonna see that now the window, it's a lot smaller, right? I can still, you know, interact with the window. And then like this could be a really cool widget that you could build for your, you know, your environment. And you're gonna still, in this case, I can also, I believe we can also resize it if we wanted to. It looks like we can resize it. Then we can also close it and we can just go back in here. This is gonna be what we're going to be building, right? I want the background that we have in here. And in my case, I'm not going to be animating the background. It's gonna keep it simple. It's just gonna be something like this. And then we can say, well, I wanna go and see the mission. In my case, I'm just gonna add a video of the mission. It's going to be the Netflix trailer. And this gives you a lot of information about the mission, the crew. You can also look at the crew here. And this is gonna give you a background, a biography of, about all the different crew members for this mission. So I wanted to do something similar where we have, you know, a mission, we have the crew, and we also have some of the equipment that we going into Inspiration4 app, and we're going to be creating a new group. This is gonna be holding all the data that we're going to be rendering. So I call it models. Kind of makes sense in my head because that's going to be what's holding the data. And then in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a new file. And then this one is not gonna be a view, this is just gonna be an enum. So in this case, I'm just gonna do, let's go ahead and create a Swift file. And then we can hit next. And this one I'm just gonna call area. So just go ahead and do that. And then click on create. So just think of these as the object that is going to hold the information about each area. And in this case, we're gonna have an astronauts area, an equipment area, and also a missions area. And normally in things like these in, in C Sharp or other programming languages, you create an object, but I'm following kind of the pattern that the world example show and also the diorama example show. So I'm just gonna keep it that way. That way my head gets used to that structure, that coding pattern. That way, you know, going forward, I can use 
enums in, in different ways because in Swift, it's more, I think enums are more powerful in Swift than they are in other languages. And I'm gonna show you why that is. So normally you can create an enum and you can do something like this, right? You can say enum and an area, and you also have to have a case by an enum. And you can say, in this case, I'm gonna say it's gonna be astronauts, which is going to be the astronauts and then equipment, and then we can do also mission. So, so this will satisfy what an enum will require, but we need more about an enum. I wanna know the string of each one of these, like basically the string representation. I, will, I also want to be able to iterate through this. So that's when you start adding basically all these protocols and we can say, I want to use the string protocol. I also want to use identifiable protocol. I also want to use a case iterable. I think I'm saying that correctly. And then lastly, I'm just going to add the equitable because I'm going to be basically running comparisons against this. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm also going to be getting the ID of this because this is using this protocol. So you need to get the ID which identifies each area independently. And the way that you do that is you can say, you can declare an ID variable and then basically we're just gonna say self and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I also want to add this kind of like a property that is gonna give us the name of each one of these and it's going to be using that row value and then we're gonna be using lowercase. You can also use uppercase, there's other options in there, but that's what I'm gonna to use to display the name of the area. And then I also want a title, which is going to identify basically the title for each one of the screens, the areas that we're going to have. So in this case, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a new title a string, and then we can just add curly braces. And then in the curly braces, I'm gonna add a switch statement, which we're gonna need. And then this one is going to determine, okay, which title am I referring to? The next thing that we need to do though, is I also want to add one for the crew members so that we know, you know, information for each one of them. Gonna grab some of it I'm not gonna display everything that way we don't have to worry too much about the sizing and we can say in the case of Jared that's going to be his information he's a founder and CEO of shift for payments and so on and then we can also do this so I think this gives us enough information about all of them that is going to help us. I'm also going to be adding a view model and this one is going to be also a Swift file and we're going to do view model and we can hit enter. And this one is going to be a little bit different than the enums. It's actually going to be a class. So in this case, we're going to be also declaring what the navigation path is going to be. And the navigation path is going to contain areas. So that's basically what we need to do. So there's also going to be something called a macro. And this macro is uh, an observable. And the reason why I need to make this an observable is because if some of the views were to get changes, if they're reading one of these properties that we're gonna be creating, only the views that are reading specific properties are going to get updated. So this one is going to be a new macro that the, the team, the Swift UI or the Swift team at it, I think there was something called observable object and it wasn't as performant as this, but just trust me that this is gonna be that one that we need. And then this one is going to be also a view model. I need to get used to having a curly brace on the top instead of the bottom. That's just something that I've done over the years. And then this one is going to be just navigation path and then you have to declare the type. In this case, I'm gonna have an array of areas. So I'm just gonna say it's gonna be an empty because we're gonna be designating that in a different place. So I'm just gonna say navigation is stack, and then we're gonna do also curly braces. And I'm gonna also have another view in here which we need to create that is gonna hold all the different navigation links. So I'm just gonna say navigation to areas and we can just leave the commented out for now. And then we can create a new file in here. And this file is also going to be a Swift UI view. I can hit next. It's gonna go ahead and paste my name in there. And this is where we're gonna be basically adding all the different navigation links. So I'm also going to be introducing the new V stack, which we haven't used just yet. So you can do just like what I did here with curly braces. 
And normally with a navigation link though, this is gonna be the one that is going to activate where we're going to be going to. So let's say that for now we can just say, well, I wanna take people to a hello world screen. So we can just say, this is gonna be the hello world one. And we can say nav one or something like that. And then you can also specify a label. So we can say label and then curly braces. And instead of these, you can specify the what we're gonna display on that label. And for that label of the actual navigation link, which is gonna be, in our case, gonna be a bang, and then we can say system image, and then this is where you can specify what kind of icon you have, and we're gonna say Chevron, and we can say right. And if I were to run this right now, we can just run it on the actual, actually we can run it in here, or you can run it on the simulator. Let me see what error am I getting just to make sure that I am, okay, looks like I still have a missing, a curly brace in here, and we can go back here into our areas and then do command R. And it's not going to work because we haven't really added these navigation to areas to our areas. So right now the navigation is stuck, doesn't really know anything about it. So let's go ahead and do command R to rerun it. And I love when I get errors because if you guys get the same errors, then you know, how to fix them. So, so right now, if I were to get close in here, we can say hola, it's gonna take us to our new view. And you can see that we have a back button in here. He knows to go to the landing page because we're telling that the system in the navigation is stuck where the landing page is. And you can say, you can you can do navigation three. So, so this is cool because it's gonna help us in building what we need to build. So let's go ahead and go back in here. And we're gonna go back now into these navigation areas and we can just go ahead and delete all of them because we're gonna to need to do something more realistic. So what I'm gonna do is this navigation to areas is gonna contain some of the main menu placeholders. We're gonna have a title, we're gonna have a background. So I'm gonna start with the title and we're gonna keep these with the V stack. So you can do a title by using text. And then I can say, welcome to the, I can say to the inspiration for mission by SpaceX, something like that. And you can also, if I were to run this, this, this might look okay, but it might not have the, you know, the style that I want, but let me try and refresh this so you guys can see how this looks as we type. So right now you can see that this is how it looks so far. So another thing that I can also do is I can start making changes in here. I'm gonna make it monospace so that we have the fixed width for this text. I can also designate, okay, what kind of font am I going to be using? In this case, I'm gonna set the size, I'm gonna do tab, and the size is gonna be 40, and then I can also do the weight, the weight is going to be bold. And there's many ways that you can do this. This is just how I did it for now, and I think it's the easiest way. And I'm gonna set the top here, the alignment on padding, on about 250 so that it moves this text down. And we go back in here just to make sure that Looks like that disappeared. And you can kind of see that we're gonna start to look at how this looks in real time. You can change the text in here to 20 if you wanted to make it smaller. I think I did 40. And as we play with this, we're gonna start tweaking some of these. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is let's actually do the real navigation in here. So I'm gonna do a, an actual H tag. Once you have these, we should be able to see all the different options in here. So if we get into it, you're gonna see astronauts, you're gonna see equipment, and that's going to allow us to, you know, if we wanted to add more areas, we can add more areas in that. This is gonna be changing dynamically. So before I keep going though, we can also add what's called a background, and that background is going to be added to the V stack. So we're just gonna say background, and in this case, I'm just gonna add an image. The image is something that we need to add and I'll add that as well. So it's gonna be inspiration for. So right now the image is not gonna exist. So we can start adding some of those. So if we go here into my finder and go into inspiration for resources, which is where I have all the different things that we're gonna need for today. Then I also have an image in here, which is going to be the background of the inspiration for. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it into assets. So let's click on assets and then we can just drag and drop that. So drag it and drop it here. And then it's gonna make it 2X. So just go ahead and drag it and drop it into 2X. It's gonna scale properly if we do it that way. 
So now if we go back in here though, we should be able to see that background showing correctly. So let's just give it a minute here until it loads. And you can see that now this is some, somewhat looking okay. We'll start fixing it as we go. Okay, so once we have these, we're also going to be specifying, we can also specify the control size of these navigations, control size, and then we also can use either extra large. That's just gonna allow you to change the sizing of each one of these buttons. And we can go ahead and zoom out. That way you can make it, you can make it a lot bigger than it is. So I can also set it to a small, and you can see that now that it's going to change. So we can go ahead and go back to extra large. So there's also another thing that you can do. And if we go back in here, we're gonna have to add a couple more things. So in this case, I'm going to be doing comparisons though, because I want to push different views depending on which case, which area I'm looking at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if area equal equal to area the astronauts, then I'm gonna be basically launching a different view. So we can say here as well, I'm just gonna go ahead, copy, copy and paste, else if, we can do else if in here as well for all the different sub views that we're going to have. And then I also ended up doing a spacer in here so that it pushes all the content up. You guys can see, I can move it around. I could also scale it if I wanted to and scale it a bit. Maybe we also start looking at some of these options so I can select it. You can see that the navigation link is also showing correctly. And then I can go back in here and you can see this is the mission. And then we can also, looks like we have equipment. Okay, mission equipment. There we go, and then mission trailer. Let's go ahead and work on the crew view, and we can go ahead and open and create a new file. We can do next, and this one is going to be crew area. I'm gonna call all the areas with the postfix of area. That way it makes sense in my head as we're working on some of these cases. So in this case, I'm gonna have a horizontal stack, so because I want to have all the different crew members horizontally stack. And then I also, I'm going to be looping through the all the different crew members. So we can say, you know, just like we did before. In this case, I'm gonna say crew. And then remember, we can do all cases. And if we do all cases, it's gonna give us all the different cases for the different crew members. So, and then I can access that by using, you know, whatever you put in here is what we're going to be accessing. So I'm just gonna call it crew. And then I can say in. So once you do in, I'm also going to be creating a vertical stack because it's gonna be basically what's gonna hold all the crew data, we're gonna have an image, we're gonna have a title, and also a description. So we can just say, you know what? I want to have actually this stack because we need that. And I'm also going to be doing an alignment. And the alignment in this case is gonna be leaning. So we wanna make sure that we push it to the top left and we don't need content in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. And we can just do curly brace and delete this. And then in this case, I'm also going to have an image for each one of the crew members, which we haven't added yet, but we're going to be adding as well. Basically, you wanna do a backslash and then an open parenthesis and then crew, and then we can get the crew member name. Looks like we don't have the crew member name. I thought we added it. Oh, maybe we didn't add it for some reason. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And then I'm gonna go back in here and then paste it. This is gonna give us just the raw value, each one of these so that we can, you know, get the image and build the image name. So now if we go back into areas and actually to crew area, there we go. We can get an access or property in here. So this is gonna be rendering the actual image. And I also want to resize it because the size that I have, it's not, it's not really, you know, what I want to have in the app. And so this is how you can modify the size of an image by just adding the resizable and then you add the actual size of the frame. And then in this case, I'm gonna say, what is going to be the width? The width of this image, I think I ended up doing 180 and then the height, I ended up doing 200. We can do comma and then height and then set it to, to 200. Then I'm also going to have the, in this case, I'm also going to have text. So I'm just gonna say text and then I also want to say, okay, what is going to be displayed on this text? I want to have the full name of the crew of the crew member, and I'm gonna say font. In this case, I'm going to be using. You can use some of the pre, you know, predefined. I'm going to be setting a custom size and a and a custom size of the font that we're gonna have. And then in this case, I'm also going to make it bold. And then I also want to add another option in here, and it's gonna be basically we're gonna be displaying the about. So we wanna display you know, information about each crew member. 
And we can also say, in this case, I'm gonna set the font, and we can cheat, copy this, copy this, and then we can set it to 20, and I don't want this to be bold because I want the title just to be bold. You can kind of see here how things are looking. So the next thing that I wanna do though is I wanna change the frame, the entire frame, but before we do that, I want to add all the different crew member images. So let me go ahead and pull that and we can grab and drop all of these ones. And you can see that we have all the different crew members. While we're on it though, I also have, if you notice, a picture of each one of these. So we can just add those as well. And I think those are all the different ones. I had some other things that I played with before, but I didn't really like how it looks. So these are all the images that we're gonna need for now. Now, if we go back into the crew area, we should be able to see how those images are gonna look like. And while it's loading, let's go ahead and add the minimum width of the actual frame. So we can say minimum width, and the minimum width is gonna be, I think I set it to 180, minimum height, so it's going to be. So this is really helpful because if you, if you don't want this frame, let me go ahead and remove this extra frame. If you don't want this frame, this V stack to be lower than this width, basically you cannot resize it and, and be less than 180. And also the height is not gonna be less than 200. And we can also remove these right here. So the next thing that I wanna do though, is I want to also add some padding and we can probably just set the padding here to 20. And then lastly, I'm also going to make it a glass background effect because I think that also looks super, super cool. Right now we're looking at astronauts, right? So this is the one that we're gonna do that on. So I'm just gonna say crew area and we're gonna be basically pushing whenever somebody clicks on that option, we're gonna be pushing them to that. This one is going to be for the equipment and then the last one is going to be for the mission. Now we can go ahead and look at astronauts and you can see that the astronauts are looking kind of good. I'm not 100% I'm not sure that I like how it looks. All right, so I think I'm happy with how this looks. So now we have basically a little etching here, which is for the padding that we added. And I think everything looks looks a lot cleaner. And if we size that, things are sizing, are sizing correctly. So that's how you can use the horizontal stack. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new viewing here. So just do new file under areas. And then we can do here, just gonna call it equipment area. And then just go ahead and hit enter. In this case, we're gonna have a couple of different environment. And these environment options are gonna give you options to basically open a window, dismiss a window, and also to open an immersive space and close an immersive space. So first I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically get our view model. So I'm just gonna say environment and then view model. Then I'm gonna say private. And then here is where you can start basically, I don't know if they're called projecting, but you can access the environment information and then which is gonna be injected to the actual Inspiration4 app. And once it's injected, then we have access to any environment information within all the views. So this is how you can get the data that is stored in the view model in your sub views. So the next thing that I need to do though, is I also need to access the open window. So to access that, we can say open window. And then in this case, I'm gonna say var open window, clone this and I can say this miss window. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that here. And they also have other things for immersive experience. So we can say open immersive space. And then I can also say dismiss immersive space. We can also rename this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, copy and paste this, that way we can access that as well. So once you have those though, now we should be able to use them within the body of this. So before we do that, we also need to add a bindable property. So I'm just gonna say binding, and then this is gonna bind to the model, and then we can just say equal model. So when you say, when you do bind, binding, anything that changes on this model that we're binding to is going to be reflected within the view. So if you're reading, let's say, some information from the view model, you can say, okay, I wanna listen to the changes on that, I wanna listen to changes on that, and it's gonna reflect on any view components that we attach that too, so that's why you use the bindable component. So if we go back in here, now that we have that, we should be able actually bindable. There we go, no binding. 
that didn't look right to me at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so now we can say H tag, and this is gonna have basically two different options horizontally, so that's what I'm using, the H tag. And then I'm also going to have different options within the H tag, which is gonna be the rocket, and also a bounce. So I'm gonna have an image, and in this case, I'm gonna have equipment and then capsule. And then I also want to resize this. I'm gonna say res resizable, just like we did before. And then I'm also going to be changing the size of the frames. I'm gonna say the width. In this case, it's gonna be 300. And then the height, in this case, I set it to basically to 300 as well. But then I also added some padding because I wanted to make sure that things were spaced correctly and we didn't have the image going all through the, basically to the edges. So I'm just gonna add in a little padding in there. I'm also going to be adding a toggle. So in this case, the toggle is going to have the a property. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and remove all these because I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna say model. And then in this case, I'm gonna, the first option is going to be the rocket, right? So I'm just gonna say, if the current rocket is currently showing, then we can change the text of what we show on the toggle. So I'm gonna say, if it's currently showing, I'm gonna show the option high. So I'm gonna say high rocket capsule. And then we can say volumetric because this is gonna be that volumetric option. And then I'm also going to copy this. And here I'm using the ternary operator. This is very common in programming languages. So I'm just gonna save us some space. So once you have that, I also want to bind to the is on uh, event. So I'm just gonna say is on. And then the way that it's gonna say is gonna determine if the button is currently pressed or not, or if it's on is by reading the bindable property that we're setting above it. So I'm gonna say model, and then it's gonna say is showing. And in this case, you need to add a dollar symbol and that's going to designate that you're binding basically to that, to that property. So once you have that though, then we can now basically bind ourselves to the onChange event. And this is where it started to get a little confusing at the very beginning because there's just too much chaining. And, but trust me, it's gonna work. And once you learn it once, it's going to, it's going to make sense. So wh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, when, what is, it, what is it that I'm gonna be listening to when there's a change? So what I'm listening to is the model is showing full rocket. So whenever that property changes, I'm going to execute an action, right? And that's why I'm binding to that. So to execute an action, I'm going to say, okay, underscore, and then I'm gonna say it's showing. And in this case, let's go ahead and hit enter, enter, enter. In this case, I'm going to check, okay, if, if we're currently showing this, then we're going to be, in our case, or our final way, we're going to say opening a window, right? Because we're gonna be opening the volumetric view, which is going to hold the capsule. Right now, we don't have that yet because we haven't created it, but I'm gonna put placeholders in here. So we can say, there we go, and we can go back later and then finish it up. But right now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say open window, volumetric, and then we're gonna say here, we're gonna say dismiss window and then volumetric and we'll work on those and then add them as well later. So now that we're binding to the on change event, I want to add this toggle. Basically, if we look at the toggle here, we can also add whether we want this toggle to look like a real toggle or like, you know, that little circle that you can toggle to or you can have it be a button. In our case, I think I'm gonna say, you know what, I want to have the style, and this style is going to be bound. So if you go in here, you can say, I wanna do a bound on this style. And then the other thing that I, that I can also do is I also can change the padding here, and I'm gonna say the padding is gonna have 25. I use padding a lot, so that should allow us to basically to do that. I'm getting a narrow in here. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay, so it looks like I'm missing the in keyword in here. So this is where you see Dilmer is learning Swift. So, so basically this is saying, okay, it's showing, it's projected to that variable, and then we can use that variable in here. And then I think that looks good to me. And it looks like I also have an issue here. This is supposed to be is on, not in on. And you can find that out easily by just trying to type in, there's nothing called in, so it's on. There we go. The material options, so we can just say glass background effect, and there's code duplication in here, but I think it's okay because we're 
pretty much getting started with this. And then I also need to set this basically to passing the view model as a brand new model, otherwise we won't be able to render it here in the preview. Okay, so that's looking really good, right? So here's where you can say, well, is that, that's too big. And you can make it smaller if you wanted to. You can change the padding here if you wanted to, but I think in this case it looks good. So this one says show rocket capsule and you can see the toggle is working and then it yeah, looks like everything is working. We need to pass that into the navigation area and this is for equipment, so we can just do that. If we go back into the inspiration for app, there's gonna be something that we need to pass in because we're taking a view model. We need to basically keep track of the state. So in here, I'm just gonna say state and then I'm gonna say private var model equal view model because the preview doesn't have anything to do with this. This is The preview is just to be able to mock things up. This is what's gonna happen in reality. We're creating a new view model and we want that model to be you know, persisting across all the different views. So now that we have that, that's that's cool and all. So how do we go about actually, you know, changing some of the the different spaces that we're going to that we're going to have? So we can go in here and this main one is just going to be, you know, our first one. There's really nothing that we need to have in there. I also need to add another one though that is going to have the capsule reality area. So I'm going to create a new window group, and this one is going to have an ID. And this is how you can start creating windows that you know we can use within the app. So in the case of using a volumetric window that we're going to be using, we can create it this way. We can say capsule, reality area, and this is just, so, just a name that I designated. And then in this case, I need to tell it what's going to create that. So in this case, we haven't created it, but we will. And then I also need to specify the window style. In this case, this one is going to be volumetric, right? It's gonna be kind of a, an augmented reality piece that is gonna be floating and placed in a plane, on a wall. So we need to make it volumetric. And then I also want to use a size. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste that in here. And let me just go ahead and uncomment it. And then for the width of this, I set it to 0.6. And then for the height, I believe I did the same thing. And then for the depth, we can set it to that, we can set it to this. And then you can designate, you know, if you wanted to do in meters, centimeters, and so on. So I think this works as it is. Then I also need to create an immersive space. So remember, we wanted to display the rocket as an immersive experience. So in this case, I'm gonna say full rocket, and we can say reality area. And this is, again, this is just a name that I made up. You can make that up uh, to whatever makes sense to you. And then it's gonna be full rocket reality area. And we're gonna be creating that as well. And this is when it gets interesting, right? Because you're gonna start designating what the style is gonna be. So in this case, I'm gonna use a constant, and then I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be a full immersive experience. And then in is also going to be set to full. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and create a new group, and it's gonna be reality views. And then I'm gonna move it down, maybe right about here. And then we can just add two new views. It's gonna be a Swift UI view. And then this one, we're just gonna do capsule reality area. So just gonna copy and paste that. And then we can also do another one for the full rocket. So it's gonna be a Swift UI view as well. And then this one, I can say full rocket and then hit enter. So now if we go back into our actual app, we can just go ahead and uncomment this. That way we don't forget to do that. We also need to pass in the models. So the way that you can pass the environment models is by using this that environment and basically doing that. And then we can also do that same thing here on the actual full rocket reality area. It looks like those are good to go. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and focus on this first. So we're gonna have to import reality kit and I also need to import reality kit content. That way we can access some of the information here that we have in our Reality Composer Pro. Once you do that, you can also say Reality View. And this is where we start getting into the Reality Key type of API so that we can access some of that information. So the way that it works is you can access, you can get this thing called Content and then In. We're gonna do a Guard, Let, and then Entity equal. We're gonna do a Try here with a Nullable Check and it's going to be asynchronous because most of everything that you do with, you know, interacting with Reality Kit Composer Pro, it's by using asynchronous programming. And then I'm gonna say name. This one is going to be scene. And then we need to tell it, okay, where is this scene going to be located? Well, we know it's located in a bundle. 
And this is gonna be that bundle name that I told you that it was really important. And then if for whatever reason we cannot locate that scene, let's just go ahead and display enable to load scene model. So once you do that, if you wanna add the content, we can just say content that add, and then we can specify that this is gonna be the content that we're going to be adding. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here on our full rocket. Just gonna go ahead and remove that. The only thing that is going to change is gonna be immersive. This is gonna be what we want to access. I also want to say reality kit and then import reality kit content. Once you do this, it's gonna say, okay, I want to find that scene, that object in here, and then I want to basically render it and by adding it to the content object in here. Okay, so it looks like that's good to go. And in fact, you can just go ahead and hit refresh in here and we should be able to see it. Let me go ahead and look at the project here really quick, just to make sure that everything looks correct. I went ahead and moved these spheres just to be closer to the pivot point. Otherwise it's gonna be really hard to find. So just make sure that you place them really close to the, basically to the pivot point, which is zero. So I did negative 22 and then the other one is like, is 20 point something. That way you can see the full immersive experience and then this one is just set at the pivot. So in this case, this is a full rocket reality kit. You can see that we now have the two different spheres rendering. If we go back into the capsule, we should be able to see that one as well rendering in here. And you can see that now that one is also rendering. The first thing that I'm gonna do though is let's go into this scene. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and you can go forward and back by using W, A, S, I can also hold the option command and then basically you swipe up or swipe down to zoom in and zoom out. So it's pretty handy to be able to use those controls. Now, if we go back into my window here, which have all the resources, I'll put the links to these, which I got from Sketchfab in the description of this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag them and drop them. And I'm going to go ahead and, oh, it looks like I already had a capsule in there for some reason. So I can just go ahead and delete this one and then move it to trash. So we should have one capsule and then one rocket. And then in this one, I'm just gonna add the capsule and make sure that it is set to, you can make it bigger if you wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And that should wrap up that. I'm not gonna add any changes to that, but the one that I'm gonna add changes to is going to be this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. We're going to be adding a rocket. I'm gonna set it to be, there's gonna be different positioning that I'm gonna set on this one. So for the rocket, I ended up making it close to that. So it's negative 50. And then I think on the Y axis, I didn't do anything. And then I'm gonna set it to negative 200 centimeters. That way we can push it, we can push it back. And let me just make sure that I can see that rocket. And there we go. I'm just gonna put it right there in the view so that we can see everything, everything correctly. I'm learning to use this, so that's why I keep moving around. So I think this looks good. So that next thing that I'm gonna do is on this rocket, I want to have a particle emitter. So I'm just gonna do that and then drag it and drop it into the rocket. Go into my particle emitter. I think I did this too many times, so I should remember all the different settings. So I'm gonna add it right there on the bottom of the rocket and we can probably just zoom into that. Just double click on it and it's gonna take us closer. I'm just gonna go back a little further. Okay, so for the particles though, I could just hit play and you're gonna be able to see them rendering. I set this to 1000 and this is set to 1000. This one I did that, the size, I change it to six. And so far it doesn't look like what we are building, but trust me, it's gonna look better in just a minute. And then here it's gonna be the local space at the direction is gonna be set to negative one. That way we can have it, yeah. Something, something like that. So that's looking more like, you know, the fire coming out of the rocket engine. And then maybe the size zero, we can set it to something a little smaller. There we go. I think five works. And then the color, I change it to be, I think yellow at the beginning. And then, and you can make this a lot better than, than what I'm doing, right? You can, you know, you can move this up a little bit more if you wanna make it, you can just probably set it to two if you wanna make it look a lot better. I think that looks great. So. The next thing that I'm gonna do is click on this plus symbol here and I'm gonna add the earth. And the earth is going to be a lot larger. Let me go ahead and change the size first. It's gonna be 20, 20, 20. And then for the positioning of the earth, I did negative two to five. And the C axis, I ended up doing it as negative 400. So let's do negative 400. 
and then that y axis i also made it negative 120 and that way if i go back here you can kind of see the idea of i want i wanted the rocket to look like it was coming from earth so that kind of gives you that idea so the next thing that i want to do though is don't right click on that <laughs> actually click on this plus symbol and i'm going to be bringing the ambient audio you can have a special audio if you wanted to have audio be assigned specifically based on the distance of the object so in my case i'm just going to do ambient it's going to be a consistent sound and then i'm going to go back in here to my resources go into sound and i'm going to drag and drop this component actually you need to drag it and drop it into the project and then once you do that you can drag it and drop it in here you can see that this is good and then i'm going to set it to loop now if you go back into the ambient audio i'm going to associate it and i can hit play just so that i can show you what i'm going for in the ambient science fiction so i'm going to create a state variable it's going to be private and this private variable is going to be of type audio playback controller. So I'm going to say audio controller and then audio playback controller. And then this is also going to be nullable just in case we have issues with instantiating it. So it's going to make it like that. And then now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say ambient audio entity. And then we already have the entity that knows about this scene. So we can just say, okay, I know what scene I need to look at, which is the immersive scene. Then what I can do here is I can say, well, can you find an entity that it's called ambient audio, which is the one that we created. So it's going to say, okay, ambient audio. So once you have that though, we can also do gar and the let resource. This is where I need to pull the actual audio file so that I can associate it to the audio playback controller. And then I can say audio file resource. Now you need to specify, okay, what is the name of this? So it's going to be root. And remember, we, make, we made it a space and then it's a wave file. So I'm just gonna say underscore. They don't allow period. So I ended up doing the actual underscore. And then that last parameter is gonna be from where, right? And well, this is gonna be from this scene. So I'm gonna say immersive and then it's gonna be USDA. That's the name of the file. And then you also need to tell it which bundle this is gonna be coming from. So I'm gonna say, well, from this bundle, and then I'm gonna say else, just in case we can find it, we can just display some type of an error. And we can say, I don't know, enable to find a space that what file, and that should you know give us enough information. And then I can say audio controller equal to ambient, and then the ambient audio entity, and then this is gonna be a nullable. So you're gonna say, well, in this case, it's gonna be prepare audio. We already have the resource. So we're basically associating the ambient audio that we have here to the actual resource. And I think I already had it associated, but I had to do this for some reason. If this doesn't work, this works without it, then I think you're good to go. But this is how you can go in about associating these during runtime. And then I think this should be good. The last thing that I'm gonna do is on disappear, I'm gonna make sure that we pause the audio. So I'm gonna say audio controller and then I'm gonna say stop. That way it doesn't keep playing if we dismiss the actual uh, immersive experience. And then the other thing in here that I need to do though that I didn't do is this needs to be a wait. So remember anything that you deal with reality kit content, it needs to be asynchronous programming. So this should be okay. And then the other thing that you also need to do here, if you don't want this to crash, is we also need to add the previews to have the environment view model. In this case, we're creating a brand new one. And then I'm gonna do that same thing in this one. And you can see that, that it's gonna give you an error unless you refresh it. And it looks like we're getting an error for some reason, but I think we should be okay. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm gonna go ahead and do Command R. All right, guys, let's see if this works. I'm gonna move the window to the right and let's go ahead and see if we can look at it. Let me go ahead and bring it closer to me. And you can see that now I can go down if I wanted to get a little bit closer so we can get a closer look and we can move it around, right? As, as we wanted to, I can also toggle it in here if I don't want to see it. The other thing that I can also do is we can look at the full rocket and it's going to give us this pop-up, which we need to allow an immersive experience. And we got the audio playing. So everything it's, everything is working. And we can go around and check things out, right? Let 
There we go. So that's what we have so far. Let's go ahead and go back. I'm going to go ahead and do a new file. It's going to be that. And I'm going to hit next. This one is going to be mission area. And we can just go ahead and hit enter. In this case, I'm going to add what's called the AV kit. And I believe we need to go back in here and make sure that we have that framework added. So I'm going to say AV kit. And it's going to be this one. Hit add. And looks like that looks good. I'm also going to need to add the video here. So I'm going to add a new group and we can say videos just in case we, we want to have more than one video. And maybe we just put it here on the, on the very bottom. Now, if we go back here into my assets, I'm going to go into desktop and then resources. And then we can say video and it's going to be the video. The reason I started SpaceX was to get humanity. Basically, it's going to be the video for the announcement of this mission in Netflix. So credits to Netflix, just to make sure that I don't get in trouble for putting that in this video. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it here. Copy items if needed. Go into build faces. And we need to make sure that we copy that bundle resource. Otherwise, things are not going to work. And then we can just say inspiration. Make sure you add the actual video. And then hit add. That way, now we have access to it with the code. So now if we go back into our mission area, this is where we can start working now on this view. I'm going to say import. All right, guys, so we got everything now. We have our astronauts in here. We have the equipment and we also have our mission, which is what we just added. I can hit play. The reason I started SpaceX was to get humanity to Mars. Come over around. Dream of space accessible to anyone ultimately making science fiction not fiction forever. What they're now to do will change. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in here and let's see how cool this is, right? Now we can have a full immersive experience and I can hit continue. And maybe we just put these right here and I just want to look at the entire rocket. Let's go a little bit down. So you have, we want to have a trailer as well playing. We have the music going. SpaceX now you can have something like that. We want to try to make the dream of space accessible to anyone. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about Swift UI or Reality Kit, let me know in the comments below because that's going to help me in understanding what things you want to learn going forward. If you want me to bring more videos, let me know as well. I'm really curious in the comments. Thank you very much, guys.